the first Sunday in the season of Advent. We're back here to this place. We're back here as we begin a journey we've done so many times, but a journey we begin anew. It is a new church year, and we prepare in this time of Advent to hear once more the words of the prophets of old as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ. Even though the person Jesus was born thousands of years ago, the message of the Christ still needs to be born into our hearts, into our lives, and into our world. And so we gather. Advent, a time of waiting, of preparing, of getting ready for the one we name Emmanuel, God with us. This year, as we embark on this Advent journey as the people of Kekko United Church, the invitation is for us to lean into the light, to lean into the light of hope, the light of peace, the light of joy, the light of love. And so as you can see, much preparing has happened this week to help us to lean into that light. So I do thank, as always, our Picto United Church decorating elves for transforming our sanctuary into a place of beauty and life. It is indeed a labor of love, and we give thanks. As we gather, as always, I draw your attention to a number of announcements in this morning's bulletin and a few that are not there. This morning's bulletin is dedicated in loving memory of David Rudolph, Inez and John Rudolph, Norman Obi, Betty and Lena Gill by the family. Blessed be, thanks be to God. As we gather on this first Sunday in the season of Advent, we are so aware of how music grounds us and guides us on this Advent journey. And so, as always, a thank you to our choir and the members of the choir for offering gifts of music in a, a safe way, in a, a way that enriches our worship. And a thank you to special guest Angela Campbell, and a friend who often joins us in the Ministry of Music. So thank you, Angela, for being with us. And Mark, where's Mark? And Mark McKenzie, a new friend. People may know Mark from his work at Stone Soup, but you may not know Mark, that he's an accomplished organist. And so as we leave our worship, um, today we'll be blessed by the Ministry of Music as it is presented by Mark on our organ. And again, for that we gave thanks. Thank you, Mark. I hope that you had a chance to look at your Advent Christmas resources, if you pick them up or if they're safely delivered to you, or they're also available on our Facebook page and on our website. If you didn't receive your package of resources, there's extra resources in the narthex in there to schedule our Advent giving and living calendar and also the at-home luminary resource. And so there's lots of information there. You'll notice in our bulletin that Advent activities are beginning this week um, with our Advent study, Now is the Time, and we're going to be doing it three Tuesday evenings on Zoom, beginning this coming Tuesday. So if you're interested in being part of that study on Zoom, please email me as soon as you can so I can send you the links and the resources. But we will begin gathering this Tuesday evening. Also, the invitation, way ahead of time, as we look towards our Joy Sunday, and it's that Sunday when we traditionally would have our white gift and our uniquely um, Christmas offering, that is uniquely often a pageant or a Christmas story, but because of COVID regulations and not being able to move around in the same way, we're hoping to embark on a, a, a different journey this pageant as we share our stories of joy. And so the invitation is also in your bulletin around the two to three minute video offering, asking you to, to share um, in your own words what gives you joy, what brings you joy, anything about joy. Sing a joyful song, sing, share a joyful story. And if you don't like any of those options, send me a picture 
and tell me what joy, Christmas joy, means to you and we'll use that in our worship on the third Sunday in the season of Advent. Our tapestry group is meeting this week for their Advent Christmas gathering and they'll be focusing on that theme of joy and the information is there. And also the work of our Ways and Means Committee on Tisket a Casket, win a Christmas gift card basket. Tickets are still on sale with the draw taking place live next Sunday at noon. And also, many of you, if you're on Facebook, have received the invitation for our 12 Days of Christmas online Christmas bake sale and raffle. And again, lots of information there. And if you have any questions around these fun fundraisers, you can speak to Mary McCullum as Care of Wary, Ways and Means or Patty around the Tisket and Tasket, and I see Grace Weatherby at the back around our online 12 Days of Christmas. So lots happening in the life of our church community. I think it is a season, four weeks leading us towards Christmas. I think it is a separate season from the season of Christmas. Advent invites us to live in the now and the not yet. Advent also is traditionally a more somber time in terms of the readings that we turn to in Scripture, the music that is offered in the season of Lent of Advent. Those scriptures, those hymns reflect a longing, a waiting, a hoping. We dwell in that longing. And we hope and wait and pray for the coming of the one who will fill our lives, life, and love. Over and over again in the season of Advent, we hear the words of the prophet who proclaims that God will come, God will enter the world in a most surprising and unexpected way. Archbishop Desmond Tutu reminds us, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. And so we lean into the light. We lean into the light of hope. As we gather, you'll know in your bulletin the invitation to join in prayer filled action. As our choir offers our Advent chant as we gather, twilight and darkness, you're invited to cup your hands as a symbol that our lives are a manger. We are to be a manger, preparing our hearts, our homes, our world to receive the one we name Emmanuel, God with us. So let us down. Make way, make space. This is that. The waiting and the wondering, the normal and the not so normal, the longing and the dreaming, the birth of the sacred. This is that. Into the darkness of our world, into the darkness of our lives. Into the darkness of these days, the light of God comes. A light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. This is Adam. All of this and so much. where despair breathes. We are waiting. 
For someone is coming to live in peace in the face of turmoil. We are waiting. For someone is coming to spread joy to people and places filled with sadness. We are waiting. For someone is coming to be love, holy love for all. Someone is coming. We are waiting. We are waiting for the one born long ago. We are waiting for hope and peace, joy and love to be born anew this day in us and through us. Let us be gathered. Let us pray. God of Advent, among refugees and outcasts, you breathe your first breath. In the cry of a newborn child, you proclaim Emmanuel, God with us. Come, God of the margins, breathe into us the spirit of hope-filled longing for your kingdom. Make this advent, to come this advent, to make us dream of and work for a better world of justice and freedom. May it be so. Get a piece of chocolate already? Anyone would? No? Anyone have a chocolate one? Or? Oh, so you're waiting till later on to, to open it. Well, this one is an advent calendar, the same process each day, but each day you're invited to either think about something you might do, think about something you might give, a way for you to live and give the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. And you can collect your gifts at, at home if you want, and maybe even create your own Advent bag to put your gifts in, and then you can bring them in in January, and we'll make sure they get them to the 
the different organizations that were supporting, like our food bank or Tierman House or the, the school program at Northumberland. Or I know some people like to bring them in bit by bit, and that's fine too. And then in January, we'll, get, we'll continue to share the light of hope and peace and joy and love as we share our gifts. But one of the special things this Advent, and I hope you've noticed them around the church, are what are called luminaries. And we have some luminaries that we have placed around the church. And luminaries are a way to remind us that the light of God shines around us, but it also shines through us. We are called to share the light. And so again, I hope in your resource kit you picked up your luminary. And you're invited, in whatever way you choose, every week during Advent, to add a new symbol to your bag. I already added this week's symbol, the tiny, tiny, tiny little star. But we still have a long way to go towards Christmas. And there's a candle inside here that you can light and place it in your luminary bag. And in the little resource, there's a reading for you to, to read and some things for you to think about and a prayer to pray. And of course, if you're brave, a song to sing. And what better song to sing when we're talking about life than this little light of mine. And Donna began last week sharing that song and sharing some signs to go with that song. So we're going to continue to learn and sing through our actions this little light of mine. for us this little light of mine one more time as Beanie and those who want to join Beanie and friends downstairs for a time together.
darkness of Advent, the longing of Advent, the waiting, the hoping. In the season of Advent, we turn to the major prophets of our Hebrew scriptures, and this morning to the book of the prophet Isaiah. Biblical scholars remind us that the book of the prophet Isaiah comes to us from three distinctive historical periods in the history of the people of Israel. The verses we turn to today come from a time of longing and darkness, waiting and hoping. It's a time following the exile. The people of Israel have known destruction and displacement. As refugees in Babylon, they knew homelessness and hopelessness. They now begin to return to their homeland, but everything is not right and merry. Sorrows and suffering abound. So here the prophet speaks for the people. As the prophet calls upon God to make God's self known, the people long for God. And so the words of the prophet express their need to cry out to God. From Isaiah chapter 64, the prophet laments. If only, O oh God, you would rip open the heavens and come down to earth. Its heights and depths would quake the moment you appear. Like kindling when it's just about to catch fire, or like water that's about to boil. If only you would come like that so that all who deny or hate would know who you are and be terrified at your grandeur. We remember that long ago, you did amazing things for us that we had never dreamed you'd do. You came down and the mountain shook at your presence, O oh God. Nothing like that had ever happened before. No eye had ever seen, no ear had ever heard such wonders. But you did them for the sake of your people, for those who trusted in you. You meet whoever tries with sincerity of purpose to do what you want, to do justice and follow in your ways. But you became so angry when we rebelled and committed all sorts of wrongs. We have continued in our sins for a long time. How can we be saved? We are all messed up like a person compromised with impurity. Even all our right efforts are like soiled rags. We're drying up like a leaf in autumn and are blown away by our wrongdoing. And it's so sad because no one calls out to you, O oh God, or even bothers to approach you anymore. You've been absent from us for so long. You left us to dissolve away in the power of our sins. But still, eternal one, you are our mother and father, Yahweh. We are just clay, and you are the pot. We are the product of your action, shape, and form into something, into people of worth. So don't be angry anymore, O eternal one. Don't always remember our wrongs. Please look around and see that we are all your people.
for us in the Christian tradition. Advent is the beginning of a new Christian year. For those churches that follow the selection of readings we name as the lectionary, it's also a time when our gospel readings shift from one gospel writer to the other. So this Advent, we turn to the gospel writer we know as Mark. Mark's gospel is the earliest of all the Gospels, written just prior to the year 70 and the year when the Jerusalem Temple was destroyed. These verses from Mark's Gospel are often referred to as a little apocalypse. Though these words in Mark's Gospel are spoken by Jesus to his disciples, more likely they are the Gospel writer writing to his community some 50 years later. As you hear these gospel words, we need to remember that these words were never meant to be a prediction of or a description of the end of the world. For the world view of the gospel writer is that time is more linear, past and present and future. In linear time, time naturally brings us towards the end of time. So as we listen to these words in our day, let us think of all, ourselves included, who come to this Advent journey feeling and bearing the darkness of our world, of our lives, the darkness of loss and anxiety, and fear, living under threat day after day. So it is the gospel writer invites all of us to be in solidarity, in solidarity with all of us who at times feel that the end of the world is on our doorstep. Reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 13. As Isaiah said, in the days after that great suffering, the sun will refuse to shine, and the moon will pull back its light. The stars in heaven will fall, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then you will see, as Daniel predicted, the Son of Man coming in the clouds, clothed in power and majesty. And he will send out his heavenly messengers and gather together those he has chosen from the four corners of the world, from every direction and every land. So, learn this lesson from the fig tree. When its branch is new and tender and begins to put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see and hear the things I've described to you taking place, you will know that time is drawing near. It is true. This generation will not pass away before all these things have happened. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the words that I speak will never pass away. Take heed. Be alert. No one knows the day or hour when the end is coming. The messengers in heaven don't know, nor does the Son, only the Creator knows. Be alert, watch for it, pray, for you never know when that time might approach. It's like a situation of a man who went out on a journey. When he left, he left his servants in charge of the house. Each of them had a job to do. And the man left the porter to stand at the door watching. So stay away, because no one knows when the master of the house is coming back. It could be in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows in the morning. Stay awake, be alert, so that when he suddenly returns, the master will not find you sleeping. The teaching I am giving is for you now. And it is for everyone who will follow. 
stay away. Keep your eyes, keep your heart open. dark, isn't it? There's a darkness around and a darkness deep within. It's dark. For us in the northern hemisphere, each day brings more darkness. Darkness becoming longer and longer and deeper and deeper. And with nine months in, and numbers on the rise, and new restrictions back in place, the darkness closes in, tighter and tighter and tighter. Stop. Fear. Isolation. Anxiety. Uncertainty. Longing. Anguish, silence, darkness. I'm done in. So it's no wonder that the words of a prophet sink deep and resonate within. If only you would rip open the heavens and come down to earth. If only. Have you spoken those words? Prayed those words? If only. It is a prayer. A prayer of a people who have known God. A prayer of a people who now long for God. The prophet, the people lament. They plead, they pray, for in their time and in their place they cannot see, they cannot hear, they cannot feel God. It's dark. It's dark. And in the darkness I'm drawn back. I'm drawn back to the darkness, the darkness of other times, other places, other days, other times when the darkness has invaded my soul and my spirit and I have found myself longing, longing for light, longing for the Holy Presence, kindle the flame the light in the dark, and take our fear away. It's dark, isn't it? But yet, the darkness isn't new. Darkness is nothing new. Our biblical texts, our biblical stories attest to that. My life, your life, attest to that. Sorrow and suffering, hopelessness and helplessness, weary spirits, faith shaking, longing, waiting, hoping. 
kindle a flame to lighten the dark and take all fear. Advent is a longing time. Advent is a waking time. It is in nature's season of these days of increasing darkness that Advent comes. Into the darkness of our world, Advent comes. Into the darkness of our lives, Advent comes. Into the darkness of COVID, Kind of strange, isn't it? Just when the commercialism of this season is in full swing, just when jingling bells and music carols tell us that everything is merry and bright, Advent comes. Advent isn't afraid of the dark. In fact, Advent invites us into the dark. This dark time, this longing time, this waking time, this resting time, this time when we're invited to wait upon God and to rest in God. To rest in the God who is not separate from us, the God who is intimately involved with us and our world. The God who dwells in the darkness. Wait. 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 It's interesting that in both Hebrew and Latin, the languages of our biblical text, the word for wait is also the word for hope. Wait. Hope. Hope. Wait. In Advent, we are drawn towards the one we await. The one who is for us the bearer of hope. The one born into darkness and uncertainty and oppression and suffering and struggle. The one we name as the light of the world. How, where, when that light will emerge, we do not know. But we wait. And hope. It seems to me that it is often, very often, in my life, that it's just when I'm about to give up that hope comes creeping in. We hope. We hope in God. The God who became flesh so long ago the God who will become flesh again. The God in flesh and the God in flesh. God will come. Light will come. It's happened year after year, advent after advent, time after time. Light breaking into a dark stable. Light breaking into dark souls. Light breaking in to a dark world. And so we lean into the light. And as we lean, we feel its warmth. As we lean, we begin to share its warmth. It's dark, isn't it? It's dark. But truly, it is only in darkness that we can see the light. Only in the darkness that 
we see the leper. We are called to lean into the light. We are called to be bearers of the light, to share that light, and we do that prayerfully and faithfully. Each and every day, we are called to be the people of God in the world that God loves and cares for. And we give thanks for the many ways in which gifts of light are shared. We give thanks for financial gifts, gifts given through our gifts given in support of the work and ministry that is ours. We give thanks to God for our lives and the courage we are given to live it. And so we are a people who offer our gifts generously and abundantly. Thank you. One of the ways we join in ministry across our country and around our world is through the work of mission and service. It is our way to be God's hands and eyes and heart in, the, in our world. And so I invite Margaret Ann to come and share with us a mission moment. Center offers hope and housing help. Our mission and service grants for community ministries like Bissell Center's Outreach Housing Team offer hope for a safer, more prosperous future to many people like Joe. Joe had been living on the streets when he first moved to Edmonton to be closer to his children. His first visit to Bissell Center was for a shower and clean clothing. Afterward, he found a group of people sleeping under a gazebo together, using an electric blanket covered by a tarp to keep warm at night. We slept under there, huddled together, just hoping to wake up in the morning, he said. But after being robbed and left to freeze one night, Joe needed to make a change. Bissell Center's support workers helped him find an affordable apartment and piece his life back together. There were some nights when I wasn't sure if I'd survive. If it wasn't for Bissell Center, I'd probably have frozen out there, he says. But now I'm okay. I have my kids and family back, and I have a lot of support. And I have a beautiful home to call my own. He has a job. And he volunteers at the center to give back to the community. None of this would have been possible without mission and service. With additional support from Gifts with Vision, over 45 people housed through Bissell Center's outreach housing team were given a gift when they moved into, into new housing last year. Items such as pots and pans, utensils, and linens made them feel more at home. Funds were also used to purchase bus tickets to help people get to apartment viewings, secure new identification, or obtain a criminal record check. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. 
If not, please consider joining me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbors is at the heart of our mission of service. Thank you. 
the light of hope, the light of hope all around us, the light of hope dwelling deep within us, the light of hope shining through us. What will you do this day, this week, this Advent, to share the light of hope? May the blessing of the one born so long ago embrace us and enfold us sending us out into our community and into our world to be the people we are created to be. May it be so. Amen.